Most of you uh, probably know uh, it's in IT or heard of it. Uh, we are around in the SMW ecosystem now for really some years. I think first SMWCon uh, I joined was in 2011 in Berlin or so. Um, and I started my first semantic uh, media wiki experience around 2008, 2009. At this time, uh, I was a um, software process manager at a software company. And um, we had already a media wiki there, and we decided to uh, improve the requirements management by adding some kind of a template mechanism to enter uh, requirements into that uh, system. And I was looking for a way to get a form-based approach into uh, MediaWiki to have a more structured way in entering requirements. Before that, it was like in a Word document, everyone was typing, and uh, yeah, this results into a relatively poor quality uh, for the software document. So we were looking for um, a form approach. And luckily, uh, I came across uh, semantic forms. Um, I think at this time this was a very early release. SMW itself was around 0 0.9, 1.0 version, so everything was still very fast moving. And um, yeah, I started giving it a try and I uh, was greatly inspired by a, a really awesome talk by Markus, uh, Markus Krutsch about um, where is your knowledge? Uh, you, can, you can find that, I, already added the link. I also added the link into the, the talks page, uh, and that's still valid. And he raised the question if it could make sense uh, to use semantic media wiki in enterprises. Uh, I would say yes. After, I don't know how many projects we did in total, and uh, ten thousands of users working with these wikis, it's a clear yes, it's a clear yes, uh, but I would like to, to share my experience from the last seven, eight years and what uh, especially changed in uh, how to build a stable semantic media wiki based distribution or installation, or however you could call it, and on the other side, how to maintain the content and content structures in that wiki. But first things first, I mean semantic core, uh, that, that's just a term for the uh, uh, the enterprise wiki distribution where we are building it's based on media wiki semantic extension so we are using the things that are around in the open source scene we also contribute back to the projects so there is nothing uh, special uh, about this it's really just uh, a collection of uh, available um, extensions and as I said yeah, it's born from the enterprise and built for the enterprise so my first use case came from an enterprise requirement and uh, I'm still very heavily uh, in the enterprise uh, area. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the software stack. So that was poor me, <laughs> beginning with uh, setting up my first semantic media wiki. So uh, it's doing everything by hand. So you log into the box, uh, install the packages, take care that all the PHP uh, requirements are met. Grab the things from at this time this was a subversion, uh, grab some target sets from here and there. So this was really uh, painful work. And um, yeah, I was aware of Ubuntu, so I was working on Ubuntu only. I was not aware of Slash and all these details, so the different uh, OSs. So this was a single operating system. It was error prone because depending on my personal day, if it's Monday morning, there could uh, be some errors in what I'm doing. So, and it's of course time consuming. Uh, as I said, things were moving very, very fast. Every week there were some patches, uh, fixes, new features I would like to introduce. So um, I found myself doing more work on the, the uh, administration of the whole thing instead of working with, with the data structures. So, yeah. And if you have the first week in the enterprise, uh, wait another five minutes and someone else comes around asking for, oh, can I have another instance? So you find yourself in such a situation and uh, then you're just doing work on the, on the root level and that does not scale very well. I mean, I'm sure you try to find a solution, bash, shell scripts come to your help and I created a lot of them. Uh, I tried to, uh, to, to make them uh, aware of the, the different sources. You see already 
Subversion was dying, uh, Garrett comes around, Git comes around, GitHub uh, started already <laughs> at this time, so there was a growing number of sources I need to take care of, and pull the things together. Um, and the shell scripts already simplify the setup, but they are not even potent. So if you run them uh, the second and the third time, they will fail, so you have to make switches. If this is already installed, don't do it again, don't overwrite the configs, and so on. So they are not very easy to maintain, become really huge blocks of shell and bash magic. And um, also they were not very good in updating existing uh, setups. So this was really the put the initial setup and then you're done. And uh, also difficult to support multiple OS. Uh, for example, if you'd like to know, okay, which operating system version I am at, I take a look at ETC OS release. Nowadays, at this time, you've, every operating system had its own magic text file worthy version is set. And so it, it is not very easy to maintain the whole thing. But it was the first automation and helped um, already a lot. Then if it comes to multiple uh, operating systems, and uh, you're the expert in Ubuntu, but not in uh, SUSE Enterprise, then you're lost, so you need to ask a colleague. Maybe he's not aware of MediaWiki. So you have a multi-admin uh, phenomenon and uh, also the different package sources here. So this does not scale very well. Um, one and a half years ago, we, um, we tried to overthink the, the whole approach of how we build our boxes, how we build our environments and um, yeah, as you all see complexity is still increasing we get some uh, composer magic a uh, package management that helps uh, we have some uh, npm packages uh, now for parse or it and so on we have some peer and so so we had a look at how, how we can do the configuration management in a smarter way and uh, we ended up with puppet because at this time this was already very settled, there were some alternatives around Chef, Ansible, and so on. We had in the last SMW cons already talks about this. So we, we selected Puppet uh, together with Wakerant to build our boxes. And um, this is then more like a recipe. You write down what you would like to have, and Puppet takes care of making this multi OS uh, aware, making this item potent. So if you run the uh, the puppet script a second time, it, it won't fail, and you can fully automate the whole thing. You just say what you want to have, click the button, wait. At the moment, it's around 15 to 20 minutes to build our complete stack. Um, wait until this is done, take a cup of coffee and green lights at the end. That's very nice. You get rid of the error prone thing, so this is very helpful. And I put a small recipe here. This is really so that just like, okay, the admin email should be like this and that, I would like to have the dog rule and this and that place. So you can really just specify what you want to have. Writing this in the manifest for Puppet and it executes that and you're done. But that was for just the beginning, this was around one and a half years ago. Um, and this now looks much, much more complicated because um, we learned from our experience in the field that um, just building a virtual machine and then dropping it into the customer environment is not working. I mean, virtualization sounds great, but you have different uh, hypervisor versions, you have uh, IT uh, compliance things you need to follow, so you have ITs uh, saying, okay, we need to have our base box, and then you can drop your things into that base box, but we cannot import uh, OVA or so from, from someone else built. So that's the reason why we split the, um, the overall process and we call it the wiki factory. That's really like a digital production process for our wikis. On the left hand side we still have the puppet magic building. I always say it's like a binary um, of um, our semantic media wiki distribution, uh, which is OS independent. Basically that's database dump and it's the, the wiki files. And uh, we have a second uh, puppet, um, uh, puppet uh, automation on the right hand side. Um, we call this a uh, core stack. And the core stack does all the magic that is required to run a semantic media wiki. So that takes care that if I want to install semantic core 2017 edition, I need to have PHP 7 installed. With PHP 7, of course, all the dependent uh, package 
versions are different. It takes care that Elasticsearch is set up and configured, uh, Apache configured, and so on. So this is the core stack, it's the whole environment. And then we just drop the semantic core binary there. With that approach, we can also install the semantic core on um, virtual boxes, VMs that are not created by us. That was a thing we built uh, yeah, during the last year. So we split the process into these two pieces, the left-hand side building the full stack, and the right-hand side separated by building only the core stack and then adding uh, the binary on top of that. Well, this is um, a case that comes uh, when you think of uh, wikis in the industrial um, or in industry, that, that's another use case we are working on during the last two years, Industry 4.0 in Germany is uh, the buzzword. So if you think of uh, having um, your wiki instances uh, in, uh, on the shop floor and you have 100 machines attached with, uh, with a wiki instance and you like to update the whole thing. Nightmare if you have to go to the machine, type something in, do the update process. So uh, here Puppet also helps us with uh, the master client mode. So um, you can simply roll out a new version of the core stack, updating, for example, the PHP version, and this rolls out the whole thing to, uh, the, to the different nodes and taking care that everything is fine. That was the software layer now to the content. Um, maybe you already have heard this uh, semantic app thing um, that also started around 2008 when I was designing the requirement stuff because yeah, the forum showed me that okay, I have a product, I need to have roles, persons, so I tried to collect these kind of pieces and uh, I said that things in the real world uh, get an app and I call it semantic apps, basically that's a category, a form, a template, the properties that belongs to a certain domain specific entity. So we have context, location, project, processes, a cat's app, whatever. So basically that's reusable business applications. So if a customer says, okay, I have um, this and that challenge, um, you can say, okay, you need challenge scorecard, you need persons, you need this and that. So we really pick like from an app store what we would like to deploy and then uh, fuel our wiki with that content. That's from the current uh, semantic apps fully featured. Um, this graph is automatically created from uh, our model. And we are at the moment around 50 forms, 230 templates, and 2,700 pages in total. I will show you a few examples of these semantic apps uh, later, but 2,700 pages. There is no way to maintain this by hand. You're completely lost. Also, if you'd like to run updates to this content and structure model, a nightmare. And our deploy deployment uh, framework takes care of this, diffing the structures, knowing about the model. But I come to this a little bit later. So the first automation here was, uh, instead of uh, really uh, creating pages in the wiki, um, I came up with a, a small Java bot that uh, was talking to the media wiki API and that used the API to populate the wiki with the form page, with the category page, and so on. This already had uh, internationalization support, but it was difficult to maintain. I'm not sure if you can see this, so I had some uh, ask syntax here. So if something changed, just you need to do this in both languages, so this was not the best approach here. Um, what we are using at the moment is a model-driven approach. Um, with only very little media wiki syntax left, so we put everything into templates, and instead of um, writing media wiki syntax, we describe a model how the app should look like. For example, uh, a person should have a given name, a middle name, and a last name, and you say, okay, I'd like to have these fields in, and you're describing your content, push the button and deploy this to the target wiki. That's the way we are doing it uh, right now. And with that approach, you can also make sure that uh, if you upgrade your content model, everything is version, so if you upgrade from person app 1.1.8 to 1.1.10, uh, that uh, the, uh, the content structures are valid and content is migrated if necessary. So that's really tricky and sophisticated, but otherwise 
you, you get lost in, in uh, outdated content or blockers for oh, oh, don't touch the wiki because uh, data needs to be migrated so you can handle this with this approach. Before I come to that, I want to talk about uh, semantic core and apps. Let's have a look how current semantic core 2017 looks like. <coughs> So we are two using uh, responsive uh, skin since the 2016 release. So this is based um, on, on Chameleon with uh, some tweaks to the UI. So uh, here you see uh, the screen for smaller screen sizes. Normally on office screens, this would look like this. You see it's changing the, the column and grid layout. See. So that's very dynamic because we, we are facing the situation. Let's do it like uh, Steve Jobs. You always have to have a nice device here. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have the wiki here on, on, on such a device, you have a small grid layout, you have this one column thing, you need to have this uh, stacked uh, menu thing. On mobile devices, uh, on, on uh, telephones, it's even worse. So we are looking for flexible ways on, on how to uh, scale the, the whole uh, wiki presentation. So in the, here it goes to the one stack menu. So and we have this uh, menu here on top. We try to um, save as much space for the content as we could. So that's the reason why we pushed it to the very top, make everything very condensed. And uh, here in the menu you see all the apps. So each app has its entry here. And you can click on that. But first, let's take a close look to the, uh, to the skin. A few more features, for example, if you click on that. Oh, sorry, to go to that one. This is collapsible, so especially if you're on small devices, you can uh, hide content. That is not required on that page. Um, we have since 2016 version, the visual editor integrated. So, not sure if you've seen that piece. So you can really simply change things here. Not sure who's using visual editor? few already, okay. It's a little bit tricky because the infrastructure needs a few more pieces like uh, Parasoid and so on. So that's the reason why we automate these things. So you can add the table here. Right here. Copy and paste is possible. Like this. So that's what, what users expect. We always had users complaining about the built-in uh, editor. So the, the visual editor comes here to, to help. And uh, the recent release uh, for the 2017 semantic core has also drag and drop for images and all these nice and most wanted features. So that's deeply integrated here in, into the skin. Um, if we have structured data, let's say we go to If we have structured data, we would like to edit this form so we get an additional item. So the skin uh, detects, okay, there's a category that has a form uh, enabling the icon. So I can click here and get the form edit. We have, over here, we get some helpers here to save or uh, cancel the edit on, on the top. Again, the collapsible thing is, is working here. We have some nice views. Let's take a look at the issues, for example. What is the issues app? So we heavily use a drill down here because a filtered dies if you have a lot of data because this is loaded to the client and drill down does this in a smarter way. Um, also, you see these counts like. Uh, 70 uh, issues are assigned to me. And here we have some, yeah, that, that's what we 
do very often building some special result formats. Uh, here we have these tiles for the for the issues. So you see, okay, activity stream should uh, show all changes on pages. We have tags here. You can go to edit if you click on that. You have the form to add, to add something to the issue. What else we have? Maybe the process format you have seen in one of my uh, previous tasks. Let's take a close look here. We switch this to um, SVG because um, the old output was PNG and if, if you're in a responsive world it's not very wise to have uh, non-vector graphics. So let me show you the test process here. test process, so this is rendered dynamically, so if I now scroll in, scroll down, this fits very well. Um, if you're interested in these details, talk to me later so I can show you what, what is uh, doable, just to give you an idea um, what's, uh, what's going on. I think I'm running out of time a little bit. One minute left. Four or five minutes. Okay, yeah. So yeah, basically um, that's uh, that's the idea. That's that's the semantic core. We contributed a lot of things um, back. So we still have the philosophy that um, we support the open source. So we, we take things here that are great pieces of software and we try to push uh, back as much as we can. Uh, Simon will have a talk, um, I think tomorrow, about some of the extensions we did uh, the last year, like the semantic dependency updater. This was um, inspired by an, another great extension done by RxL. More or less doing the same, but does not fit our use case. So we have very often three kind structures, and if you move something around, you need to, uh, to propagate it, these changes to uh, other pages, and that's uh, the reason why we invented that one. Um, we have these uh, SVG rendering uh, things and a few more, so Simon will show you more details on that one. So um, that's basically it. I hope you got some ideas what we are doing and how we are doing it at the moment. Everything's about automation. I guess uh, others of you already had some experience um, in that field doing it maybe with different tools, but having the same idea because uh, the yeah, SMW ecosystem is not that simple anymore because of a lot of dependencies that uh, need to be tracked off. Okay. There are some quick questions prior to the uh, lunch break um, about, yeah. But apart from that, uh, Alexander will be here, so uh, if there are questions, perhaps I drop it to him or Jaron. Yeah, so. Semantic uh, uh, apps used to be uh, separate sort of quasi applications like, like CRM and VPN and stuff. Does yeah. it still exist or is it now just one application where you pick and choose? I uh, pick and choose. Yes, okay. We, we put these bundles like PPM or uh, CRM, which are typical uh, sets of uh, apps, so we have some kind of packs, so to say, for the process management. Um, these are typical use cases because, yeah, for example, for the process management, the requirements are more, more, more or less the same for every project, so we use these uh, packs to uh, a marketing idea of this, that's just marketing, but uh, technically it's really pick and select. Uh, each uh, app has uh, uh, its place in our GitLab server and um, we build um, releasable packages for that, so the, the data models uh, are managed by the deployment tool and uh, this is done in the Node.js JavaScript server side, so uh, each app has uh, a version in our local NPM server so we really can say, okay, this customer has person app 2.0, this one has 2.1, and so on. So all the deployments are completely version tracked and managed. Alrighty, any more questions? Lunch? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah.